Welcome back. Everything working as is. Pro League Smite Friday, the conclusion of week number two. It's your boy F. Dot and your girl Taco. And we've got the final game coming to you. It is LG versus Splice. We just watched Weekend and the Boys go up against Space Station Gaming. Kind of tough for them. SSG was able to go ahead and find the victory, and they're going to go ahead and tie up that first place spot with Counter Logic Gaming. But Taco. I think as we see LG go up against Splice, I think this is a more even matchup than their last one. I, I would probably have to agree with you on that one. Splice were also just playing previously before that Luminosity and Space Station set took off, and they actually managed to find their first set win here today. And now between these two teams, Splice has a, a very real opportunity to put themselves even further ahead of Luminosity in the standings if they're able to close out this set today. That said, Luminosity captained and uh, just run by Weekend, pretty much, and you guys have voted for him, and you're going to be able to watch him on the secondary camp, and this is the guy from Luminosity Clout, obviously the artist formerly known as Vedium, but speaking to Weekend last week, I had the, uh, the the pleasure of speaking to Weak Daddy after his game, and he was just like, look, man, we got the players that I wanted to play with. I wanted to play with Kiki. I wanted to play with Gino. I wanted to play with Vedium, and everybody kind of is happy about that, and Watching them in week number one, man, everything looked like it was falling into place. It made sense in week number one for sure. I know there might be a couple of eyebrows getting raised in this second follow-up set from uh, from Luminosity. But, of course, there's always going to be some form of growing pains, especially when you start going against some of these more established players and teams yeah. in the scene. You can kind of expect it's not always going to be rainbows and daisies for uh, these teams, but... Uh, a team like Luminosity still has a, a lot of potential, and mostly whether they're able to find it at the very start of this split for Season 5 is kind of irrelevant to me. This is a team that has a very real opportunity to continue progressing and developing as the season goes on, and yeah. that kind of experience really elevates your gameplay to an entirely different level. People really, uh, they, they over or underestimate the amount of difference there actually is between you know your highest level of ranked and then competitive play because even what you might be calling the worst players in the SPL are going to probably body slam you any time that you're against them. Yeah, it's, it's it just goes to show the the giant gap in between skill and you know talking about that coming. I'm I'm gonna be flat out honest. LG doesn't win against Space Station Gaming. I think that if you ask them, they probably give you a different answer. But if you really ask them deep down, they might know that they lose to Space Station. So when you go into matches like that, it's just about finding out where your holes are identifying and then trying to fill those gaps in your strategy now you come against splice which is again a strong team but a better matchup and lg can absolutely beat splice especially with the lessons that they learned by taking on space station earlier in the day and i i think that people also don't really understand that weekend and those guys tend to talk themselves up it's not just for show it's because mm -hmm. that adds on to a player's confidence and confidence is very important when you know that you're going against opponents that you probably think are better than you or at least more experienced than you to not make the same kind of mistakes that you yourselves might. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just as simple. We can say that, but it's not just in the mental game. It's it's how you position. It's how you go ahead and be aggressive. And across the way, splice a roar point and counterpoint this is the guy that's going to be aggressive he's got the confidence him and his squad we watched them play earlier in the day this is an aggressive team that wants to get popping early and often I love the Aurora and Best combination. Same. Even though they're two completely separate roles, mid, although it does have a little bit more influence, we've seen a lot out of Best already. And again, their only set loss was against CLG. Whether or not Luminosity is going to be able to take another one off of them is, is an entirely different question. And we'll get the very wonderful chance to find out. But more importantly, I, I just love how well it already seems that Sino and Best are getting along. And yeah. Best, for those of you who might not know, he, he's somebody who kind of struggled a little bit I would say on the communications ends with teams but over time kind of just got over it and learned how to just communicate better with his teammates and I, I think that Sino is a great jungler to kind of pair with him in this sense because he'll go for the aggressive plays and just in a way force best almost to follow him up I mean we watched it again seeing splice play earlier in the day versus trifecta uh, Gina uh, excuse me Sino was playing on the Fenrir and was just forcing best into those big plays Giannis and then the Scylla later on in game number two splice actually wins that one versus trifecta two zip 
hoping to do the same here. So they're going to be helped alongside Cyclone Spin, who's made the transition from the solo lane over the, all the way on the other side of the map to the Hunter role, known for playing those carries. So now it's his position. It does pose the question, though, because you've got Cyclone, who is relatively new to the Hunter role, going against somebody who's got a decent amount of experience. I mean, Clout was initially a, a runner-up at the secondary worlds, and granted, he's kind of fallen a little bit off the map since then, and just now really seeing his revival here in season five but there's still a, a lot of history here with him in this duo lane in particular i think there's going to be a very tough matchup for even somebody as strong as cyclone mechanically can still struggle with it and more importantly i think the real differentiating factor between these duo lanes is going to be depending on how the supports actually handle things all right well the supports are going to be front and center let's take a look at picks and bands to see if that goes the same way and i want you to elaborate on that actually taco what do you mean by that because splice has a roar lg is going to have gino over there what do you mean by and that and that's the exact difference that i'm referring to is that a roar is someone who has been in the competitive scene and playing at the competitive level for a while meanwhile you have gino where this is his first real season in competitive play yeah. prior to that it's all been challenger cup and maybe the occasional tournament here in in there but for the most part it, it's never been this hard uh, SPL experience and that is, is a pretty big difference and, and I don't want to call it a skill gap because I'm not saying that Gino isn't capable of reaching that level at some point the, the question is whether or not he's actually there yet I think right. we saw a lot more pressure being put onto him and that's what Space Station did really well in, in their set against Luminosity was they tended to kind of push that duo lane out of their relevance mm -hmm. in the set and uh, if Splice were to look to try and do kind of a same sort of play style, I, I think that Luminosity might encounter a lot of troubles. Certainly could be. Not a uh, new strat to focus the new guy. So LG taking care, or have to look at that one. Splice going to go ahead and select Terra. We've seen her do very well in the solo lane, so we'll see if that continues on. LG will be picking up Uller. A character that can be played both in the Hunter role or the mid lane. And Cabazots, another flex pick, jungle or solo. Take your pick. Would probably prefer to see this in the solo lane because I might actually be expecting it to be a Terra solo. Divios definitely not foreign to playing those Guardians. Mm -hmm. If anything, that's, that's his forte. And so I can imagine that they might prioritize the Terra into that role, but getting the soul in Giannis more importantly afterwards, Bess has already looked great on this Giannis today, and I can only imagine what more he has to show us. Best has always been adept at playing the Giannis. We saw the build actually being very specific to uh, what he wants to do. So taking that away from him, or rather bringing that to him is going to be a nice look. The Morrigan across the way for LG. Keith may played this character in game number two. I liked him better on the Morrigan than what I saw earlier. So a very interesting pick here for LG as they pick the shapeshifter. Tier band out versus Splice. And it makes sense because they're not entirely convinced that this Terra is going to be for the soul. And there's always that flex pick opportunity. I think that's one thing mm -hmm. that both of these teams can kind of mess with each other on as far as head games are concerned is because a, a lot of members on both sides have picks that can be shared between each other. And anytime you've got these rosters that are composed of those kind of flexibility players, right. it's, it's really a great asset because it kind of throws the enemy team for a loop. You're always left wondering, is this really going to be here? LG going to ban out the rat man and the splice going to ban out the dog man. LG have the option. And they need, um, again, so much ambiguity here. The Morgan probably in the mid lane, solidifying Uller over there to the left side. And Sylvanas will be the support selection. So still unclear if Kamazots will go in the jungle or the short lane over there, like that style. This feels like the right move for Luminosity, oh, prioritizing pressure in both of the side lanes, because if this is a Kamazot solo, that should be a, a strong enough lane to hold its own. I love the sylvanas Uller combination. You want a lot of pressure to kind of compensate and I, I guess divert the attention from the Morgan, who mm -hmm. might struggle a little bit more in that mid lane. Even though it's against a Giannis, a Morgan still probably isn't going to be able to out clear necessarily after a, a certain level. Giannis is going to be able to have those high mobility factors to farm away. Are we seeing a Fenrir support here for Splice? It's been a hot minute since Fat Chunk's Assemble days, but it would oh, not goodness. surprise me out of Aurora, but 
again, that just goes back to, I, you, we can't really be certain where Fender, Vamana, or Terra are going on this team. That's what's so interesting about season five. I think if you if you haven't watched at all, you look at me and go, what are you talking about? Clearly Vamana solo, Terra support, Fender jungle. That's kind of what I'm used to, right? But we've seen the Fender support already come out. Vamana, Vamana jungle was very successful for homie FA once upon a time. And Terra has been played in, in the short lane more than the support role. Sir Ket, 10th selection overall, though. Excellent to have the double Sir Ket on your side with the help of the Morrigan. LG and Splice. Game number one. We'll bring it to the casters. Let's get to the action. Thank you very much, guys. Welcome in. It's our final set of the day here in North America. Splice up against Luminosity. And totally, I mean, 10th pick Sir Ket. Are, we, are we there already? What's more surprising than the 10th pick Sir Ket is the first pick Terra. Yeah, yeah. This is something that just keeps evolving throughout season five. These teams are keep experimenting with a lot of their picks. They know what works for them and their style. I think that Luminosity here, they did decent against the Terra last game in their previous set mm -hmm. when they had Camisades on Kiki. This time around, they got Camisades yet again. We'll see if they're going to be able to extend their early game aggression. They need to look for that blue buff invade. Well, there you go. It's Splice versus Luminosity. Make sure you get your votes in on who you think is going to win in the chat. The the Fenrir pick, they were speculating on the desk. Is that going to be in the support role? Is yeah. it going to be jungle? I mean, Sino played it in the jungle earlier on today and looked really good on it. So I'd be kind of surprised. But if you would have asked me before today, I would have been pretty confident that that was going to be Terra Solo, Vamana, jungle, and Fenrir support. It's very true. Vamana can be anywhere here. Homie FA playing it in the jungle of uh, a couple days ago. I think that it's going to be a good look as we head into the first game of this best of three set. Let's take a look here. It is going to be... Divio's on the Vamana. No shenanigans out of Splice this time around. Surprise, surprise to have it look this normal. Uh, the the spicy Splice roster. Did you hear me say that earlier? That, that those two work pretty well together? I did. I wish I didn't. Well, that's why I brought it to you now, just in case you had missed it and were unlucky in that situation. Luminosity Ward deep in the enemy jungle to make sure that they can tell exactly where Sino is going to go on this Fenrir. Remember in game one of their set earlier on that against Trifecta, he rotated over to the left-hand side of the map, cleared out the enemy red buff, and put pressure on that left-hand side. In game two, he did the more standard start, so we'll see if that's what he wants to go for. Take a look, though, at what Splice is doing. Aurora going to attempt to block off these minions, only blocks off the archers. So Ooh. normally we'll see Terra's pick up the three. It's a harder block to execute totally, but it lasts for longer. The two only stands there for five seconds, whereas the Monolith will remain on the map for 10 seconds. But against such an aggressive comp, or at least a dueling rather, of Sylvanas and Uller, I like this decision still. This is a little bit of a stutter step because now, Luminosity can't really just ignore the wave entirely. They're gonna still sit in here a little bit longer as the red buff will be secured by Splice, but they're gonna miss out on a good amount of gold and experience under their tier one tower because of that little botch. Well, 51% to 49, I think that's our closest vote yet. I think Splice is gonna take the victory. Gino finds the route right on to Cyclone Spin. Sprint popped as well, but Cloud's doing really good damage here to Cyclone Spin. Just needs a couple more autos, but missed one there on the retreat, and that was enough to make sure Cyclone survived, but it did cost him his Purification Beads. Wing can get a blink in. That should be first blood, and it will be. Luminosity miss the kill onto Cyclone, but grab it onto a roar anyways. That early circuit pressure ends up paying off. Just ignoring the own blue buff is the key of the game. A lot of these junglers that want to apply pressure in the dueling have to rotate immediately. Ignore your own back harpies. Ignore the blue buff. Go straight from the speed into your own red buff. Get level two off of that as long as you solo speed and red buff, and then look for that hot level two blink play. Well, Sino actually pulls ahead of Weekend because of that invade. Weekend prioritizing the gank and the pressure over his own individual farm, though that's kind of the story of his career as a jungler, kind of more focused on the, his team's utility than his own level. But it, Sir Ket's one of those characters that can really benefit without having the level lead, just having the percent damage on her passive, the true damage on her ultimate. A lot of characters uh, would struggle a little bit more than Sir Ket would in a situation like that. Well, it's funny that he actually ganks the dual lane because it is Cyclone Spin, a, a teammate of his of season two in the AFK days, where he used to help him in the solo lane. This is something that Weekin does a lot. He puts himself behind on purpose because he knows he's going to get somebody else ahead that will outcarry him anyway. In this case, it's going to be Clout 
on the Uller, who has a fantastic 1v1 matchup against Sol now that he has first blood. And now, and as you mentioned, I mean, Sylvanas, Uller, very aggressive early on, kind of accentuates that. It's funny, you're right. I mean, we can continues to camp Cyclone's lane whether they're on the same team or not. Just old habits die hard, I suppose. No invade right now onto the red buff that did just respawn. Remember, that's where Splice started in this game. Best is going to be able to come over and grab that one as Weekend is on the right-hand side of the map, making sure that his speed gets confirmed. Weekend did go for the blink, which could be a little bit risky into this Fenrir. That, I mean, that was kind of the entire idea of Splice's composition in their first set today against Trifecta was just stun people with Fenrir, pick them up, and let our damage dealers do their damage. That's why we might even see an early Mad Guy's Cloak potentially out of Weekend, maybe even before level 12. We'll see how he transitioned his build. He actually went for the tier one Morningstar. It's probably not going to be the Transcendence, considering that you don't normally look for a stacking item. So I'm expecting the Hydra's Lament instead, trying hmm. to augment his in-hand damage once he applies all those poisons with his kit. Yeah, Hydra's is one of those items that has always felt like it would feel really, really good on Sir Kep, but we don't see it bought too often, mostly because if you're weaving auto attacks between every single ability, you're losing DPS because you consume the poisons before you can stack all three. So we'll see which, decide, which way... Weekend wants to go. He'll get 10% CDR regardless of his choice, but Hydra's would uh, be the bigger burst right away if he can weave those auto attacks in. But Transcendence now, not really worried about the stacks as much, so wouldn't be too surprised if he picks it up just as a pure damage and mana option in the jungle. It just goes to show that there's a lot of options in the jungle, whether yeah. you go the mace, whether you go the katana for Heartseeker, the mace for the crusher, or now even the morning star for the Hydra's Love Man. Weekend, known to innovate a lot in his strategy. Did that stellar burst just get absorbed yeah, by, by the, the wall, wall from a roar? And I wonder if that was an accident or intentional because Splice is holding this wave all the way at their tower line to Which make is sure. Good. Yeah, to make sure that they aren't going to get pressured out too hard by Clout and Geno. This basically prevents themselves from getting zoned in the duel. If lane. there's anything I learned from Bob Ross, there are no mistakes. There's only happy little accidents. That's right. And because that wall blocked the Stellar Burst, it enables them to continue to freeze the lane right here. Aurora just looking out for a Cyclone spin. Like, that was a happy little accident. The perfect play. It's, it, Aurora says, no, Cyclone. It's okay. The minions, they can stay here. We can put a little bit of pressure onto Sino, who's finished off his boots. Sino's been going for the Void Shield right away. Best uses okay. ultimate to secure the red buff and give himself an escape route out. I like that play. I like it too. If the blink happened from Weaken instead of the ambush, I think there yeah. was a small window to at least force the purification beads out of the Giannis. It's so difficult to gank a Giannis because of through space and time, applying so many portals through the walls, giving him that CC immunity, Devios to go in that ultimate in the soul lane just to regain some health but off of that Giannis yeah you got the CC immunity wow Aurora just gets eliminated again, again that's the that's the play for the circuit one of those reasons that she's been basically permabanned so far in this young season is how well she kills everybody on the map she's got the the percent damage against the tanks that helps her out there and just good damage in her kit to make sure that she can confirm the squishy. Still has the ultimate, so he could look for another gank opportunity. That's why he was waiting around the corner of the dual lane, trying to see if he can still shut down this dual lane even harder. Noticing that Cyclone spin doesn't have Aegis. He has Purification Beads, and look, he's coming behind Cyclone. There's the beads from Cyclone spin, but Last Breath is going to toss him right back into Clout's clutches. Weaken with kill number two. He's had a hand in all three at eliminations so far for Luminosity, who are off to a really good start in this one, Tolly. Up 1,500 gold and experience, and Aurora continues to be under pressure. Can't be knocked oh. up, but can be pulled back in. Another Immediately one. Immediately, Key's going to go into that last breath. Looks for it, but can't find the death bane. That should be enough to get Aurora out of there. Just the geometry doesn't end up favoring Keeg's mate in that situation. I like the fact that Keeg's mate didn't commit to the kill. He could have easily ambushed in, guaranteed the last hit basic to proc off the passive additional bonus attack damage, but respecting the fact that his life is worth so much more than a level 4 Terra. Gonna back on out there. Did force the sprint from Aurora, and the way Terra's passive works is as long as you just use the monolith of the walls, you are now knock-up immune, so that Wrath of Terra from Gino useless good plays there from aurora good purchase as well most supports these days going for the talaria boots instead of roar electing for the guardian boots to make sure that he can stay as 
healthy as possible in these in these fights. The reinforced shoes gives you a little bit of health, but it's really about that 20% CCR and the passive. They'll give you some extra protection. Bass needs to be careful on the left as does Kiki on the right. Gets picked up by Sino. No ultimate available for Kiki, but Sino misses the Brutalize. Still shouldn't matter unless there's a big heal from Kiki. Still waiting on that ultimate cooldown, but just never gets it. Sino finally able to confirm it. And that's just good recognition of cooldown timers there on the on the ultimate for Kiki. No way to get away without that bat out of hell. And more importantly was the Terrace Blessing from Aurora. Divios this time around does use the ultimate, but 100% healing reduction from the last breath. Weaken in here alongside Gino, but this ultimate lasts longer than last breath. Man, Divios still going, finally brought down Weaken with the last hit, but it was a team effort. Even Gino rotated over. As you mentioned, 100% Healing reduction, but Cloud thought he switched stances there, but ended up actually jumping in on a Cyclone spin. It cost him his purification beads, but Cyclone dropped the ultimate. If that's a more even duo lane, Cloud dies there 100% of the time. But when you get a lead, just gives you a little bit of extra wiggle room to work with, right? A little bit extra confidence to look for plays such as that. Unfortunate that he wasn't in the correct stance, did not want to commit under that tier one tower, one V2. You know, his name is Clout, not Zatman. Uh, that, that's one of those situations, hey, that's happened to everybody, right? Where you're on a stance switcher and you're like, wait, I changed stance, right? Sure. Just happens. It's just one of those things. Yeah, but we're in the SPL here. Yeah, I know. This is not a time for you to make basic mistakes like that. You're right. Clout should feel bad about that one. Red buff invade being attempted by Luminosity, weakens positioning all over it. Does have his own speed buff up on the right-hand side, but one of the advantages of the Season 5 map is that you don't have to worry too much about leaving your speed buff up and being on the other side of the map because it's so far away from everything else that it's really difficult for the opposition to invade it, even when they know they've got a chance to. And even if you do lose it upon an invade, it comes back up in two minutes' time. There's so many things to do in the Season 5 map between if they're constantly focusing on your speed buff, there's plenty of time for you to invade the left side of the map because there's no possible way that enemy team will shut down your side of the map and the jungle side and the duo lane side. Speaking of shutting down the duo lane side, take a look at those net worth charts. I mean, Clout is up way over 1,000 gold on Cyclone Spin, more like 1,500, and that is before we start factoring in experience. Now, yeah. despite him only having the one death, he might as well have three oh, deaths yeah. because of how much pressure is on this lane. He had to back consistently several times. He's already down three levels as a result of his second death. Beautiful pull there by Gino. There was a ward. Gino's not doing anything really insane. Pretty insane damage there on the weekend. As Keegs making a transform and find it through space and time of his own best. Oh, Could escape, no. but Keegs needed that one auto attack, misses it, but Unstable Vortex will do it. Double kill for Keegs. As nice plays all around the map. Didn't mean to take away from Geno's pull at all. I just mean it wasn't completely blind. It wasn't a, a, a shot in the dark. Weakened, sacrificing himself for the greater good. The young blood, new mid laner for Luminosity, showing what he's truly about. It's not easy actually hitting a point blank through space and time. No? Like, there's a lot of pressure trying to hit that ability. It's funny because when I play Giannis, I don't know about you, Agro, but I feel more confident that I'm going to hit through space and time if they're, like, at Tier 2 tower and I'm in the middle of the lane as opposed to if they're right in front of my face. I mean, I, I was a Giannis one-trick back in the day. That was the only god I could play. So I still I feel, I feel pretty confident one way or the other. It was Giannis and Zeus. That's all I had in the god pool. Fair enough. It was really a god kitty pool for me for, for most of my career. Uh, a really good play so far here from Luminosity, up about 2,000 gold. And when we, when I was on the cast with FDOT for Splice and Trifecta, we were talking about how Splice seemed to really embrace this early game pressure role. I mean, they were picking gods like Fenrir that want to do well in that early to mid stages and putting significant pressure around the map. Now, that's kind of not the case here. It's actually Luminosity who have the advantage in the earlier stages. So doing what Splice want to do at least in that set, not saying that that's exactly what their game plan was here, but anytime you pick Fenrir, that tells me that you're not trying to go 60 minutes, basically. Sure, but honestly, it doesn't matter which team has the early game lead for this specific game because there's no goal theories taken quite yet. This lead being built by Luminosity hasn't been pushed down this hill and escalated too far yet. They're still waiting for that right perfect window. I think they're waiting for maybe another kill onto Cyclone Spin and shutting down this tier one tower. Whew, well, they almost found it. 
Just a jump would do it for Clout, but with how many rotations are coming through from Splice, decides that it's in his best interest to just knock down that Tier 1 tower and allow Cyclone Spin to go back to base. This is that uh, KO that you always reference, totally. Not a full-on kill, but a knockout. Knocks Cyclone Spin back to base, and that could be the window that LG wanted to pull gold. That's right. Divios now makes his presence felt, knowing how far behind Cyclone Spin is. He needs to make a presence on the opposite side of the map. Doing great damage to Kiki, forcing him back to base. Teleport is available for the Camusouts. Will opt to buy a second relic upon his back. Goes for the tier two silver talisman and the thorns. There's a jump on top of Gino. Pulled in right into that through space of time again. And Sino will get credit. This combo that Splice loves to execute. It's a two alt combo. You could you could insert mage here. It's Fenrir ult into whatever mage best feels like playing. And today it seems like the Giannis is the call. He did a great job stopping that Gold Fury attempt from ever starting because of the damage that he put onto Kiki during Kiki's rotation in. And now right there, able to assist with Sino on grabbing Splice's third kill. A very common strategy in Season 3 was to focus supports yes. early game because of how the 3v3s happen between your support, mid lane, or jungler. You look for the burst damage whenever they're immobile. Sylvanas between his pull, between his Wrath of Terror, is a sitting duck. So what was played back then a lot? Poseidon was played, Ryzen was played, and you will look to blow up Sylvanas. Now, it doesn't really matter, like you mentioned, what mid-mage is being played because in the early game you're stacking the gauntlet of thebes you don't have that protections to really get you through all that damage and it's really working out so far gino only his first death but going for that gauntlet of thebes as you mentioned takes a little bit to, to ramp up so there's still plenty of a window right now for sino to make that play continue to work and even once that uh once the next item for gino looks like it's going to be a sovereignty i mean that's not going to help him against the, the best who's going to be wailing on him once he's in the Fenrir mouth, so probably going to be a while until Gino is tanky enough to not worry about that combo. Honestly, I would love to see him pick up maybe even a Mad Guy's Cloak or a Spirit's Rope, so that way at least if he does get CC down, he would have a little bit of damage mitigation. Even some supports at level 1 will opt for Purification Beats if they know they're going to get focused. Well, no one from Splice knows that this Gold Fury is going on, or if they do, they don't feel like contesting at Luminosity. Get that Gold Fury, and as you were mentioning, the early lead is nice and all, but until you get a Gold Fury, it doesn't really start to take hold. Well, now it is heavily in Luminosity's favor, up 4,000 gold at just the 15-minute mark. It's a very important lead to establish because now the Tier 1 towers are going to start to get melted, weakened, camping Cyclone Spin again, stealing those back Harpies while evaluating if it's worth potentially diving here under the Tier 2. Cyclone Spin really not eager to take this little 1v1 skirmish against Cloud because he's not going to win it anyway 1v1, let alone potentially getting ganked by either Weaken or a random pull through a wall from Gino. Well, Divios feels comfortable enough to proxy on that right-hand side. He's been under no pressure at all this game, and that's kind of been the way that Season 5 has developed totally. It's pretty rare that we see pressure on the soul lane. Beautiful patience there out of Sino. Does pick up Gino even through that Wrath of Terra. Double stun. There from Aurora will confirm the kill for Divios. Now Keeg's mate has got to get on the run, but Best is going to stop him in his tracks with the through space in time. Two kills for Splice in the mid lane. Gold lead be damned. And now they're going to grab up a tier one tower for themselves as well solely. That just shows the power of grouping as five. Even when behind, yep. power comes in numbers a lot of the time. If Sino doesn't wait for Wrath of Terror to finish before biting down and bringing Gino closer to the action. Gino gets away scot-free. Great play from Sino. It's so difficult in a game such as Smite to have that kind of patience when you're listening to your teammates call out all of the abilities. Best now going to get grouped on force to use the purification beads, but it's going to be a dive from Weaken. I guess he uses well. Weaken keeps the chase going on. Best needs to try and survive, but he'll bring down Weekend instead. Soul the Soul Gem Soul Reaver combination. Best with the long range through space and time. Impressive stuff out of Splice mid laner. And just like that, Tully, it's even. The double orb on Stable Vortex does so much damage, let alone the proc of Soul Reaver and the extra 40% magical power coming from the Soul Gem, even healing him for his trouble. That was a nice little juicy bait. Not sure if it was intentional, but Best actually walked back towards Weaken, and then Weaken, like, stutter step. He's, like, thinking to himself, like, oh, wait, he's, like, right next to me. Maybe I'll squeeze it in here to proc the poisons. 
And then he just kind of played himself. And he just got popped by the best, who's sitting at 3-1-2. and two. Best has looked really, really good, and that's, a, that's an encouraging sign if you're a Splice fan. I think that everyone has had their moments so far in their two sets today. Sino's certainly been impressive as well on this Fenrir. Here he finds a stun on the Kiki. Now going to pick up Weaken and force a Purification Beats. Look at that damage that Divios just did to Weaken in the split second that he was in the dog's mouth. Weaken dies, comes back on the map, goes to the first thing he can go to, gets his beads forced and forced back to base in just an instant. I mean, that's just Vamana base damage at an example. Here, Clout is looking for another kill onto Cyclone Spin, but the best is position to assist him. Even Terra's Blessing being popped by Aurora, making sure Clout wasn't going to find the kill there. And, you know, their strength in the solo lane, despite the weakness in the duo from Splice. I like the idea there from Keeg's mate. He pops the Giannis ultimate of his own to make sure that Cloud doesn't get chased down, but that means that no changeling for quite some time. Of course, the longest cooldown in the game, but with the Kronos Pendant and the Evolved Mage's Blessing, 30% CDR plus the Kronos Pendant passive, shouldn't be too long before that's back up. Going for the Warlock Staff, though, on the Morrigan, uh, this is kind of a, one of those items that feels good on every mage, but not sure that it should be built on every mage. I, I, I don't know if I'm in love with it on the Morrigan. Well, the thing about the Morrigan is if you don't have time to go into the Changeling, then what's the point of even playing Morrigan? Having that extra health bubble of 600 health once you fully stack that up allows you more wiggle room to potentially absorb a cooldown or two from Sino or Divios and still change into Giannis potentially and look for the turnaround play. So it's not going to be that defensive item that a lot of mid-mages of Season 4 went for. What was it? Mantle of Discord they usually yeah. got. So this time around, a nice hybrid tank item of Warlock Staff. Get that magical power online and get the health to boot. That's true. Sitting, it gives you plenty of survivability. Plus, Morgan does want to be in the teeth of the enemy team in the late game when she goes for those invisibility stun combinations. So certainly valuable there. This Gold Fury is going to be very valuable to the team that grabs it. Even more so than usual, it feels like, because this, this game is so close and usually Gold Fury fights, whether it's the actual objective itself or the team fight and, and you know, subsequent objectives afterwards are very, very critical. Sino uses his ult to bait out Kiki's, and normally I'd say that's a win for the, for the Fenrir, but... With how important that ultimate has been for Splice's team composition, I feel like that's Luminosity that comes out on And top. Kiki definitely has a good amount of cooldown reduction with the Breastplate of Valor. It's going to yeah. be a good look for him. He didn't really need it to do damage. He's tanky enough as it is. That's his goal. It's Sino's job to initiate. Aurora goes a little bit too deep. Terra's Blessing comes out, but Keeks is just waiting for him. going to transform into the Giannis, and the through space of time misses. Keeks still on the chase. Finally, Unstable Vortex will confirm it and give himself a route out as well. Cyclone Spin puts decent pressure onto Kiki with that shot there. Almost clips onto Clout, but Weakens going to detonate the poison onto Divios. That's two kills already for Luminosity as Splice on the run. Clout almost able to find the stun and also the pull coming from Gino. Great opportunity to find additional kills, but still a great look for them as they found two. They're going to go on the Gold Fury five minutes ago. They got their first one and they were up 4,000 gold, but then that nice little comeback by Splice as they found the pick onto Gino. Still the same amount of a lead that they had five minutes ago, even though they got two Gold Furies already. Yeah, so Splice battled back last time. They're going to need to do it again here. That team fight started off on the wrong foot, not only with Sino's ultimate being down and that being the initiating factor, but this idea of pick someone up with Fenrir, kill them with everything we have, and then just go to objectives works doesn't work nearly as well in a five-on-five -five grouping. Plus, Aurora just in the wrong spot there, a little bit too isolated. And the fact that Keeks transformed into Giannis was the nail in the coffin to start off the team fight. honestly, being able to secure that first kill and still get out with the portal. Splice will confirm the Pyromancer, get themselves a little bit of extra gold, but more importantly was the ability of Kiki to outplay Sino. Jumping the Unchained stun effect prevents him from getting immediately Ragnarok pulled into the rest of the team. So there was still time for Kiki to assess the situation. Sees the Ragnarok happen, goes into the bat out of hell. You're probably right. That is what happened, I'd imagine. Sino assumes he gets the stun and immediately tries to use the Ragnarok to CC chain correctly. And if that goes well for Splice, they probably get the Gold Fury off of it. With Kiki dead, 
that probably would have been enough even with how much Splice would have needed to invest. But we're talking about hypotheticals now, and the, and the reality of it is Luminosity's in a good spot now, up 9-6 to six in kills, about 3k gold as well. Keegs is nearly done with that Warlock staff, and more importantly, has the Spear of Desolation done now as well. 70 stacks so far on that is Divios. Receives a gank on this right-hand side. There's that healing reduction. Immediately going to sprint away, wait for Weekend to jump forward, and then head back, realizing that the only way he dies there is if Weekend's able to detonate the poison. Smart stuff out of Divios. Great opportunity to go north. This time it's Kiki in trouble. No ultimate for him. No life. Sino will chain his CCs correctly. Keeks actually transforming to Terra. Uh, and now he's going to get taken out by the best. Nice plays by Splice. They rotate over. And instead of what looked like a kill from Luminosity, goes two in Splice's direction. Now Clout and Gino here to defend where Weekends get a split push in the mid lane. LG uh, know they have no chance of defending this tier two tower. So instead they'll try and get one of their own. But with Divio's backing, Weekend knows that's not a possibility in the mid, though could be in left already a weakened tier two. Trying to get extra gold here and getting caught out of position. Clout and Gino against four splice members. Sino leading the charge, jumping away from the Wrath of Terror. Not going to be able to find any picks here, but it's Divios quietly farming the middle lane. Not much to really speak about as Fire China is still up, but this splice uh, team roster has thrived in the late game, especially with Cyclone Spin. Getting denied a little bit hurt him for sure, but he's still going to do late game soul things. He's still going to be hitting objectives like a truck now sitting at level 18. And with that pen option finish as well, going for the Divine Ruin, this is where we really can expect to see Cyclone Spin start to be an impact in these team fights. Simon has been really impressive on this Fenrir, man. I mean, the, the, the patience that he's displayed in the mid lane beforehand, waiting out that, that Wrath of Terra, kind of playing the mind games with Geno, where he says, you know, okay, I picked up Gino last time right away. Next time he's going to try and Wrath of Terra to immune it. I'll just wait it out and be able to pick him up. They're jumping over that ultimate. This is, uh, this is kind of one of the best things that I think you could see if you're a Splice fan today. Is you know, you, I think a lot of people still have confidence in Divios, the best, or Roar. They've done, uh, they've done great things in the SPL in fairly recent memory, uh, but seeing Sino play on this level has got to be encouraging. You used to play against him a lot in the console yeah. side of things. What is your take upon his evolution? He's gotten a lot better, man. I mean, he, he was a good player back then, but he's on a different level now, and now looking for another pick on a Geno. There's the combo through space in time. Supernova committed as well, but again, it's Splice starting off the fight in a 4v5. Kiki uses the portals from Keeg's mate there on the transformation into Giannis to give himself a little bit of a different angle to get away. Keeg stepping up, looking for a little bit of poke, but may have put himself in a bad spot. No purification beads for LG's rookie mid laner as he tries to run away from the damage from Splice, but can't seem to do so. Sitting very low until Cyclone Spin is finally going to finish it off. The best with a nice unstable Vortex, but a better hail of arrows over the wall almost brings him down. Splice forced to retreat a little bit too low. Uh oh, Aurora's a little low. He needs to be careful. The blink from Weaken gets the madness effect off. Aurora's still trying to run away. Beautiful shot from Cloud. Now it's Cyclone spinning a 2v2 with Divios right around the corner. The ward from Cloud doesn't spot out Divios, but now it does as he peeks around the corner here. Weaken's going to back off. And it's so unfortunate for Keeg's mate. As he fell, his ultimate just came off of cooldown. That's tough stuff for Keegs, but either way, we'll be up sooner rather than later and should have that ultimate alongside with him. Gold Fury pulled here by Cyclone Spin has enough lifesteal that he can do this fairly safely with the Bancroft's talent and the innate lifesteal built into Souls 1, but Kiki gonna harass him and make sure that it isn't as free as Splice would like. Everyone from Luminosity coming back on the map trying to get ready to defend it. Sino immediately goes. This time patient from Gino and will outweigh that Ragnarok, but it might not matter here. It's only Chase is on and Divios will confirm it, but Sino had to chase it as well and he'll get punished for it. Clout able to grab that one. Weekend applies the last breath, but it was his last breath as Divio stomps him down. It could be enough, and it will be enough. Keek's mate able to find the last hit there. Cyclone's been trying to run away, but it's Kiki on the chase. The movement speed is just through the roof, through space in time by Keeks. Trying to cut the distance as Kiki needs to connect. Beautiful ache is there, but the tension is now going to be shifted on the oh, best. That's what you get. All good intentions get punished. The best portals Kiki away to make sure that Cyclone doesn't fall and then immediately gets jumped on and murdered because his escape is down. 
No good deed. Luminosity grab a couple kills there. They do lose two, three for two, but still in their favor. And a couple key members stay up. Sp specifically, Clout on this Uller is going to be able to make sure that this Pyromancer goes LG's way quickly. So I don't mind the idea of trying to blow up a support in the early to mid-game stages, but if that's your one-trick pony idea of winning against Luminosity, it's not going to work in the long run. Now sitting at level 16 is the Sylvanas fully stacked Gauntlet of Thieves. Double aura between Sovereignty and Hardward Amulet. Trying to go for probably the Mantle. And it's just such a tanky Sylvanas. You're investing too much time now to kill this target. I completely agree with you. It's a very viable strategy. It's one that has been around forever in competitive smite. Kill the support early on while he's still pretty squishy. But you got to know when you have to ditch that plan and go to... Yeah. It's not even plan B because you never expect to just win the game off of that. It's just the next step of plan A. It's still, part of, it's still the same plan most of the time. At the 28 minute mark, neither team feeling confident enough to go for the Fire Giant. Still at the basic level here. It needs to go down before the 25 minute mark for it to become the enhanced Fire Giant. As Kiki's going to box against Divios yet again. Sino, this time not patient enough, will get outplayed by Gino. Cloud gets hit by the through space of time from the best, so he's going to be forced back for the moment. But Kiki taking three all the way into the back line and keeping him busy. Divios trying to do the same, but he's going to get hit by Weekend's ultimate. Last breath stops the healing coming out of that Colossal Fury. Kiki very low, but gets a heal just in time from his bat buddies. That'll keep him alive. Has a Teleport 3 available, so he'll be able to come back to this team fight right away. And same can be said for Divios. Geno's pull a little bit off the mark as Kiki and Divios both return to the fray. Now it's again another five on five. Look where Weaken is on the right side of the map. Gonna cut off Cyclone Spin, applies the kiss. Cyclone Spin needs to disengage. A lot of damage onto Kiki, but look where Keeg's mate is. The stealth was called. Divios is on the chase. Looking for him, but Keeg's backs up. No relics available for Keeg's mate, so he has to be extremely careful, but uh, does have that changeling ultimate, can transform into the Kamazots and would be tanky and mobile enough to, to survive at least a little bit longer if he can get it off. But if you're on splice now, you're probably looking for him. Sino uses the ultimate just in case. The weakens blink, forces it out. And that means that Luminosity doesn't have to worry about that wombo combo coming their way. The bait into the counter bait into the counter counter bait. Weak and able to force out the ultimate from Sino. A little bit of a short cooldown though, considering he does have the Yoden's Wrap. Divios goes in, uses that ultimate last breath being applied on him yet again. Shell even trying to keep him alive. Now will sustain a little bit. Wrath of Terror from Gino through Ooh. space and time. Clips three. Nice shot there from the best. There goes a the supernova down, hits Clout once, but Uller's still okay for the moment. Terra's Blessing pops Splice. Don't want to let it go, but Kiki is going to sacrifice himself here, potentially. Big heal, though. Finally does fall to the damage oh! from Sino, but Kings says, I saw your ult best. I can do you one better. Number 14 now for Luminosity, who have got some portals that continue the chase. Beautiful madness there from Weaken, but not enough to bring anybody down quite yet. Sino on the run. Kiggs going to kill good. one and stun the other, and Sino now on the run as well. The cooldown reduction allows him to use the Ragnarok for the movement speed. Weaken wrapping around the long, the short lane tier two tower. Blink is not available for him, but he could wrap around Cyclone Spin instead. Going to secure his own, or I'm sorry, the enemy's speed buff while the rest of his team waiting around that corner. The wave on the left side reached the Phoenix, but not big enough to really apply the damage quite yet. Are you surprised that Luminosity didn't just go back up and pull Fire Giant there? They had forced two back. Cyclone Spin is there, but with no relics and no ultimate. And you only lost Kiki. Health bars weren't that low either. Cloud had to back. He was a little bit too afraid because even if you're not tanking the Fire Giant, you can't escape the AoE damage. Yeah. All the rocks dropping down. Even if you have all five members, it drops five rocks. It'll be shared equally. And with four people, somebody's going to eat that second rock. It can be tough. Certainly a little bit harder in those low health situations. Maybe, uh, maybe you saw what happened to Zapman earlier today. That's true. A little bit scared. Not wanting to have the uh, Zapman syndrome there. No. Luminosity playing to very well. To be fair well. to him, though, let me backtrack on that. I watched okay. that replay. Okay. Where was Scary D there? I don't know. I saw him come into the ring like 20 seconds after the fact. Okay. 
Just saying, Zatman probably could have waited for Scary D. He wasn't tanking it originally. Mask was tanking it first. Mask yeah. had to reset it because he was and too low. <laughs> so Mask knew that he yeah. didn't want to die to the objective. Yeah, Mask didn't want to die, so yeah, Zatman right. died yeah. to it instead. <laughs> exactly. Someone was dying to the fire giant, and Mask wasn't trying to get memed. Where was Scary D? That's all I'm saying. Where was Ronald Belair? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. All I know is that Steve was on a 60-second respawn timer because of the fire giant. Luminosity looking for a fire giant of their own, though they're not. They're the ones looking to try and do the killing, not the getting killed. Divios is going to help D Ward with the rest of his squad. Clouds had an excellent game. If, you know, the, I, I know there was a lot of talk last week about how good Oceans played, and, and don't get me wrong, he played extremely well. But there's a reason that Clout's the main guy on this roster. I mean, 3-0 and 9, top of the player damage charts. That's not something we've seen a ton of Hunters do so far in Season 5. So he's had a good one. It's Luminosity pulls the Fire Giant down Look to about two-thirds. But Divio's coming around the back. Weaken. Going to use the ultimate. But Sino waited it out. And that'll be enough to get the kill. Sino takes the 1v1 and wins it. Best super low. Key's going to provide some portals of their own. Nice Aegis to stop the stun damage as well as he trades one for one. Kings goes into Giannis, actually portals Divios in the ground. Divios is not going to be able to get healthy enough. He gets taken out. The Dubla Yoon for Kiki's mate. Kiki leading the charge, going to slow out his former teammate Aurora a little bit there. The damage is through the roof for Luminosity. They're looking for a win here. Oh, Gino went for the blink pull. Ambitious, but I like it. As Luminosity grabs the Tier 2 tower. Sino, Aurora, and Cyclone Spin, the only ones left alive. Aurora does have that ultimate. Sino had to go back to base, but there's a chance Splice wants to contest this, though, with Cyclone heading to the left. Doesn't look like that's the call. They already lost two members here, Tolly. And even in a 4v3, it's going to be tough to bring down Clout and Keegsmate, who have both had really, really solid performances. 8-3-2 and two now for Keegs. That's a great performance, honestly. Consistently going into the best allows all of LG to fight fire with fire. Those portals are so crucial. Not going to have as many as the best, but you don't have to worry about that if that's the first person you pick off. Weakens sacrificing himself to distract Splice, to allow the rest of his teammates to collapse on the best. It's a little bit too grouped up there from Splice. Sido, I mean, it's, it's so hard to say because you never know in those situations if you're going to get the kill 100% on a, on a close call like Sino and Weekend had. What, someone was almost certainly dying in that situation, but you don't want to say that you don't need help. So everyone from Splice kind of rushes in to make sure that Sino is okay and that just groups him up for Keeg's mate to set him up for death. I almost feel like Weaken has too much damage in his build at this point of the game, where one mantle of Discord would give him so much protections and that CC immunity when he gets low enough. Considering how grouped up Splice was, like you mentioned, that can easily proc onto multiple members. I'm under, I guess, Mantle of Discord. If you're being, if you're in Fenrir's mouth and you go below the Mantle threshold and you get CC immunity, it should yes. drop you. Yes, it will. So it definitely would have been a good pickup here. You see a couple of them on the side of Luminosity, both Kiki and Gino deciding for some mantles of their own, as well as that Magi's Cloak we were asking about earlier on for Gino to make sure that wombo combo potential goes significantly down here for splice definitely needed the blink couldn't go into the purification beads wrath of terror becomes that much more valuable once you dive the back line so getting the mad guy's cloak just to escape the clutches of sino giving himself some more breathing room allows him so many opportunities to look for the, that ultimate ever since gino finished off those cloaks it really has been other members of Luminosity that have been under siege by Sino's ID, you know, Sino and the rest of Splice's combo that they want to pull off. And I like what Keegs is doing with his offensive style. We're talking about defense between Weak and not getting Mantle, Gino going for Mad Guy's Cloak, but this Polynomicon from Keegs' mate, it's a nice little addition and a touch to the Morrigan because you're basically squeezing a basic attack after the stun anyway before the two. Oh, Augment that with the poly Polynomicon, not to mention. It's pretty difficult to siege down these Phoenixes, so that Polynomicon will just burn it down even quicker. Completely agree with you. Now, if Poly loses a little bit of its potency in Season 5 just because mages don't get run off to Hootie anymore, which means, you know, Polynomicon's doing damage based on your total magical power. So when mages have lower magical power, like they do in Season 5, it's not quite as valuable, but it's still, it almost makes up for it in the sense that 
they aren't bursting you with just abilities anymore, so that extra bit of poly damage can be the difference that you might have been missing in a lot of your builds. So hurts hurts Morrigan and other gods that always got poly, but I feel like poly is one of those pickups that we could see more and more of as mages get used to the fact that their late game damage isn't quite as good as it was in previous seasons. A little counter to Morrigan is the Onculate that Sino did pick up. Surprised that Divios didn't go for the same option just to disrupt the stun into the second ability combination, Aurora leading the charge there. Really close to getting stunned out by the stealth Keegsmate. Weekend pushing this right side Phoenix brings it down to about half HP. Wow. Divios trying to do what he can. That damage that Weekend went for Paying hey, off right yeah. there. All right, I'm going to eat my words just like that, proving me wrong. Whenever he's left alone and unchecked, certainly showing what he's capable of doing towards the PvE side of things. Now, doing a great 3 1 1 split, Luminosity really trying to stretch Splice super thin here. And that's because Best has that ultimate if he needs to get involved on in his left hand side. And here he goes, fires off the through space in time, doesn't hit a priority target. And Geno is still alive after the entire duration of that Ragnarok. Sino can't find the stun afterwards either. Totally, that's four ultimates for one. Splice used four of their five. Only Geno had to expend his Wrath of Terra. And Splice get nothing out of it. It seemed that he even blinked in to use that Wrath of Terra. He wanted to be that Sacrificial Lamb and the bait. The rest of Luminosity were kind of seeing what's happening. Still investing into this 3-1-1 split weaken around the corner. Is Divio still defending that right lane? Great hold from Splice thus far. Basically outlasting the entirety of this Fire Giant buff without losing a single Phoenix. Yeah, only reason that LG's backing up here is because Fire Giant's about to spawn in 20 seconds. But I don't know, Tolly. I mean, Fire Giant's really important, especially past 25-minute mark to make sure you're doing extra damage towards those structures. But it, it feels... It just... So, some part of me feels... Like when a team uses four ultimates and, and you've still got four ults on your side that you could use, or three, I suppose, because Uller. Clout yeah, is on an Uller, with an ultimate advantage, that, that should be a fight that you at least try and take a little bit harder than Luminosity did. But with FG falling off, and that is true with the Uller instead of a true ultimate, I guess I guess you can see the, the, the reasoning behind Luminosity's choice. Still forced out the purification meets from Cyclone Spin for another 80 seconds. Could potentially look for that if Splice overstepped their boundaries and try to defend this fire giant. They're not out of the game entirety. No, entirely, not at all. Rather. Uh, they're only down, like, granted, they're down 17,000 gold, which sounds like a big travesty, but it's the 40 minute mark where yeah. they are full build still. Exactly. Every gold irrelevant. Only 3K pots matter right now. And LG's had a good amount of them. Weekend has one in his inventory right now. Keeg's mate has already used a 3K pot. I believe Clout has as well. So that is, that is impactful, but not uh, you know as impactful as an early game gold lead can be kiki in the front line divios gets pulled back in after the axe from cloud that'll force out his ultimate and the ultimate from aurora sino jumps in just to get the magi's blessing excuse me magi's cloak it's so difficult to try know, so to hard. make that correction. I've been correction. saying Magi's blessing for years man it's like when you say purification versus purification beads yep and all that stuff beads yeah just call it beads it's, uh, that's tough. Did Aegis was something different for a while. What even was that? Uh, sanctuary? Oh, we don't talk about those days. Sanctuary? Yeah, yeah let's not. Sino in a bunch of trouble. Now going to jump up and down and weaken. Can just go in, but ha actually it's picked up and now he's in a ton of trouble here. I think he's actually dead, Tolly, but so is Sino because of King's Mate's ultimate. That should do it. No, oh, he lives. Are you kidding no. me? But the now UI thinks he's dead. He was so low. And now Bess is going to kill Cloud on the right hand side. He got both his relics forced out and he gets punished for it. What a turnaround. Luminosity looks like they're about to take the kill in mid and be able to do whatever they wanted, but Sino survives in a complete disaster on the right as Clout falls and Kiki could be next. That just goes to show you defense out trumps the damage in a 1v2, survives the encounter, turns it around. Granted, had some help from the Phoenix, so that's the reason why he even found the kill to begin with, but still a great look to survive. Prox, both his relics even uses the, or Prox rather, the Mantle of Discord, uses both of his relics to survive that encounter. And with another two picks onto Kiki and Clout, it's Splice now that are in position to end this game. Unbelievable.
I wonder how much HP Saito had. I'd like to know if he could tweet at me after It's the more game. about the protections that he has with his build than the health. He actually doesn't have that much health. Yeah, Titan is under siege now. As Splice looking to turn it around and end the game. Aurora very low. Saito picks up a target, but we could going to be able to use that last breath. And the poison spreads to the minions. That'll spread again. A double kill for Weekend, and it could be even more. That's triple. a triple kill, but Clout takes the Penta. What is wrong with you, Clout? That was guaranteed, Tully. What is wrong with you? He had the poison. He was dead. That's just Clout, man. That was a Penta. Clout. First you change your name to Clout, and then you take Weekend's Penta Look at kill? these portals. Hold that thought. Look at the portals from Keeks, mate. They really want to min-max the time that they have of this Dia side. Going to secure themselves the victory. Nobody from Splice going to be able to resurrect in time. They have the damage. They don't need Weekin here for this one. Moving forward into this Titan room. What a back and forth game. Man, Cloud, Cloud is public enemy number one. Put Oceans back on the roster. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable play from Luminosity. What a game. I mean, back and forth, yep. a, a Titan back and forth matchup there. And Weekin ends it with a quadra kill that, in my mind, Kurt, you look at me. That, that was a penta. We, we know it. It's okay. Unofficial penta. We'll it, give was, it, it was a penta kill. We'll, get, we'll give it to him. Official penta kill in my book. Unbelievable. So back and forth. Who is the MVP? You've got plenty of options. Clout would have been MVP in my mind. Then he stole the penta, so no votes for him. If any, he gets any percentage, I'm disappointed in all of you. We have to teach him a lesson. Keegs looked really, really good on oh, that yes. Morrigan. Weekend makes great plays as well. Kiki was phenomenal. I mean, everyone had their time to shine for Luminosity, but you could also say the same for Splice. Almost heartbreaking that they lose that one. Let's throw it to the desk because I need a, a moment to recover. Stolen. Both the game and the Penta. That one looked like it could go either way. LG, honestly, just I really like the draft. I think it can't, turned up well for them. I'm going to think about that stolen Penta for a while. That is very, very... Vicium. In a nutshell, right there. Now, went to be referred to as uh, Vedium, and he is currently known as Clout. But either way, all he's really done is take all of weekends because... <laughs> That Quadra was a very well-deserved Penta for a week. And, you know, I'm, I'm with Agro on this one, guys. I, I think we're just going to have to list this one as a Penta in the books. Delete the VOD to make sure that nobody can ever come <laughs> back in time and, and ever reference this moment where we acknowledge that Clout did, in fact, do that. So getting back to the uh, more focus points on, on the actual set <laughs> itself, though, or on the actual match itself, I should say. Uh, really well played from both of these teams. I love what Luminosity did in this game, though, for the opening matchup against Splice by giving their duo a, a very solid dual lane composition because throwing Gino onto the Sylvanas, I think, was the best thing that uh, Luminosity could have possibly done here. I think that giving him a god that he's going to be able to maintain lane pressure with no matter what is very important. It's going to assure that he's never going to fall behind in farm. And I, I think that taking care of, of that factor is, is very important considering that Splice and Sino with the way that he's been playing really wanted to dive super aggressively onto the back line. Having Gino not fall really far behind at the start of the match helps out in making sure that Luminosity can keep pace. That's exactly what Luminosity did. They Not only did they keep pace, but they became the pacemaker up on top and really bringing out all their heart. Really, really, really fantastic stuff. And like I said, this is kind of what I expect out of LG. I think this is going to be a nice middle-of-the-pack team that struggles to find themselves against the top-tier teams. But when you're messing around with these guys, I think Luminosity can absolutely come through. I think also for Splice, their their comp was much more unforgiving as far as slight misplays were concerned. If even one member was even the tiniest bit out of position, they felt the repercussions of it almost immediately because Weekend having the circuit with the high mobility mm. offered him multiple opportunities to completely punish anybody from Splice who opted to step out of position or was just simply caught off guard. and. Divios, I think another thing that we haven't really talked about too much is when we saw this draft initially, I don't think either of us would have ever assumed in a million years that it would be Divios playing the mana. And yeah. I don't say that as a slight against Divios. I say it because he is just so incredible on like Fenrir and Terra kind of gods that it's just really uncanny of him, I think, to break out the mana here. Yeah, we usually see a little bit more control coming out from... Uh baby rage himself but weekend 
is going to be your MVP. And, you know, for the newer fans in the audience, Weekend Once Upon a Time, when he first started being a content creator, he his very first logo, not the W that you see now, his very first logo was Usser Kettail. I mean, this guy made a name for himself on this character, being the hard carry. And then later on, the 667s and the, and the setup man and the facilitator came out. But make no bones about it. Weekend has always been a hard carry, and he's always ready to do so. Let's see.